Hey guys, I do my best to deliver good news whenever there is good news, or at least look for that glass half full, because obviously with the onslaught of attacks against the Second Amendment community, we very rarely get any good news. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of positivity out of this story here. Chicago's final tally of weekend violence, 41 shot, 9 fatally. Now you're going to have to bear with me on the positivity because it is coming, but I know that's not necessarily positive. Chicago has the crazy new mayor over there. Remember they got rid of the goggle eye looking chick, looked like a fish in a fishbowl. Uh, didn't know that they could probably get worse, but I think they have. However, this guy has said a couple of positive things here recently, at least making an effort to do things. And it's not just talking about gun violence. Now, and again, gun violence is their term, not mine. Now, let me be clear. This guy clearly is anti-gun, and he does misname violence and call it gun violence. However, it looks like he's at least starting to passively acknowledge the fact that maybe people are deciding to do things, and maybe the home life is not the best in some of these youths out there who are committing all of these uh, acts of violence. Now, before I get into the positivity of this, I want to show the negative side of it. The side that sometimes things just never change based on geography and time of day. Remember, guys, I stress very often that the wackos on the far left, the politicians and the media, use incorrectly the term mass shooting to try to make us think that there are random killings happening all the time. And we never know when somebody's going to pop into the church or restaurant where we might be and indiscriminately try to start shooting people. That is patently false. That is purposely misleading because the vast majority, upwards to 90% of the actual shootings... And if you want to call them violence, gun violence, however you want to claim it, but it's regarding guns, right? Any type of violence that has a gun involved. These are happening in inner cities, downtown, and at early hours in the morning or very late hours at night. Not places and not times that the vast majority of us would be. We're simply not going to be there. Here's proof. I have an interactive map that I put together. Those of you that know I was looking at mapping software, I think I might have found my... Uh, solution. Thank you for everybody who helped. But nevertheless, Friday night, 11.30 p.m., two people shot in the head, pronounced dead at the scene. It was in an alleyway. Friday night, just after 10.30 p.m., three men shot, all transported, relatively good condition. 300 West 59th place. Early Sunday morning, 3.30 a.m., a five-year-old deceased. Look at that time, 3.30 a.m., a five-year-old deceased and her 24-year-old father was also shot. More on this in a second. Early morning, around 2.58 a.m., 1300 block of South Christina Avenue, man deceased, two women shot in the legs, and another man shot in the leg. Sunday night, around 7.43 p.m., wow, that's early for a shooting, right? East 113th Street, three men shot, one critically, actually, they're all critically injured. Monday morning, 6.02 a.m., haven't gone to bed yet, 1400 block of Sacramento Avenue, man with multiple gunshot wounds who later died in the hospital. And finally, these are the highlights of Chicago, by the way. Finally, West Chatham around 8.47 a.m., again, not quite going to bed yet, 43-year-old man shot and later died in the hospital. Now, I want to talk about this five-year-old because this is the one that disgusts me. I feel like most of your violence of this type of nature, of course it's all preventable. It's choices that somebody made, right? Somebody made a choice, somebody got mad, somebody's ego got in the way, and they started shooting at somebody. Or somebody stole something, dope, guns, whatever, from somebody else, and they shoot at them. It's always a conflict of some sort. It's never the type that I wrote about in my book, it's always this type of stuff in these types of communities and in these types of hours at night and early morning, right? This one here is sickening. A five-year-old girl was shot to death on Sunday on the city's west side. The shooting happened around 3.32 a.m. in the 200 block of South Campbell Avenue near Jackson in the near west side neighborhood. A group of people were standing outside when shots were fired. The girl was inside a parked vehicle when she was shot in the abdomen and taken to the hospital where she later died. That is a damn shame. This 24-year-old dad 
had his five-year-old daughter at 3.32 a.m. in the car with him. You want to talk about parenting? You want to tell me that I'm racist because I say a 24-year-old man led to the murder, the shooting of his own five-year-old daughter because he was in the hood and it was early morning hours? Then call me racist. But wake up and realize that if that's your idea of parenting, we got a bigger problem on our hands if that's what you call appropriate parental behavior. Because that will get a five-year-old killed every day. Every single day. You have got to be kidding me. A five-year-old child, a baby, who has barely lived a tiny fraction of her life, shot in the stomach in her dad's vehicle because his dumb ass wanted to go party, slinging dope, whatever he was doing at 3.32 a.m. That's a damn shame. Excuse my French, those of you that don't like the swearing, but I can't look at a story like this and wrap my head around it and make any sense of it without getting pissed off about it. And, and for God's sake, everybody should be pissed off about this. Nobody should go, oh, well, it's one of those things, you know, it just happens. No, it doesn't just happen. This is 100% parenting. Somebody thought this was acceptable behavior to bring a five-year-old in their vehicle at 3.32 a.m. Don't try to justify the rightness of this. That is wrong on every single level. That baby was probably asleep and shot in the gut and died. Her 24-year-old dad ought to be ashamed of himself, and I hope this haunts him forever. Sorry about that. On a more positive note, Mayor Brandon Johnson does have what I think is a good idea. Look, it may not work, and it's all your plan is only as good as those implementing it, but he does have a summer safety plan that he announced only a couple of days ago before everybody, including this five-year-old baby girl, were shot. He announced this plan in an effort to reduce the crime that the city has been experiencing every single year for Memorial Day. Pretty much kicks off murder season in Chicago with Memorial Day, and it looks like we are right along the same path again. However, I have to give credit to the mayor. Even though he's an idiot, and even though he's a socialist, I'm going to give him credit to recognize that at least he's putting forth a plan. His plan likely is involved with, quote, gun violence rhetoric somewhere sprinkled in there. But I read at a very, very high level, it's about 100 kids, young people, that it's almost like an army of young kids that he's putting out on the street in the hood to try to talk to people and kind of pal up with other young people their age, letting them know there are other things to do, other summer programs and things like that, and stay away from the crime areas Maybe try to go to bed a little bit earlier at night and maybe even, just maybe, get a job and actually earn money instead of stealing it. So I like the idea that the mayor has here. I think that his heart is in the right place. Um, I worry that in a lot of these Democrat-controlled dung heaps like Chicago that they put a plan out there and what they're going to say is we didn't get enough money from the federal government or for somebody, from somebody else in order to properly implement our plan. So it failed miserably. We just need more money. But the fact that this man has a plan, the fact that he even says in part of his plan that parents, you need to know where your kids are, you never hear that. In fact, he's liable to get blowback for saying that. But he's telling parents, you need to know where your kids are at night. When they leave the house, have an idea where they are and try to parent them a little better. That's not heard of. And again, I like to give credit and fairness where it's due. And I think this guy, at least for him scratching the surface of doing something appropriate, is a good thing. I would like to see his plan actually work. I mean, he did have like 11 less shootings this year for Memorial Day than he did last year in Chicago. Not saying the plan worked. Somebody might have just got hot or, you know, getting lucky or something like that and didn't want to go out and shoot anybody or argue with anyone. But nevertheless, his, his plan, it may have worked. Only time will tell. We have the whole summer to go through now, and people are kind of getting out of hibernation and realize, oh, let's go shoot up the town and sling some dope. So who knows what's really going to happen. What I fear in these types of communities, even though he has this group of 100 young people, and it should not be young people, by the way. It should also be a mixture of mentor-aged adults and young people. 
to show people, look, I made it from the hood. I made it out and I did good. Look at me. Let me help you do the same. So hopefully he is going to include some adults in this as well. But we know how instances like this typically work. You send these young people out trying to spread a good message and the ones who are too hung up in it are too cool to get out of the gang mentality, pick on them and bully them. And in fact, some cases may actually beat them up, hurt them. And I, I hope that doesn't happen. But I mean, you know, you know what I'm talking about. No one in bad communities likes to see anybody with a positive message doing anything that's different than what they do. And trying to spread a message about positive parenting and about doing the right thing is not a message that the majority of these young people want to hear in these communities because they're too embarrassed to break away from that gang culture that they're embedded in because then they get bullied and picked on. So it's really a sad thing until the overall image and message changes in these communities, nothing really changes because people are so eager to be accepted in with the cool kids and the cool group. Isn't it funny how the ones who break out of there are always the ones who succeed? The ones who don't wind up in a coffin or a jail cell? You have to break that cycle in order to not be like old 40 something year old Rodney down the street who's just a piece of crap because he did the same stuff you're trying to do at 18, 19 years old. And look where he's at. He's no better or worse than you are. He's in the same mud hole that you're going to be in when you're 40 something years old. These young people should look around them and see where these older people are and how much their lives suck and realize I don't want to be like them, not try to be like them. So, while I do commend this mayor for the message that he's sending, because it's very likely that the young people going out will will still say, stay away from guns. Guns are bad. Here, I've got a nice pretty poster printed up to show you how guns are bad and they cause problems. Instead of talking about the source, the real, the person doing all this stuff. So I'm sure that some of that's going to be involved because this guy is anti-gun. But he's got the right idea if the right person in his organization would look at it honestly and say, okay, we've got something here. We've started it. Maybe it's just a pinprick, but it's something that we should be able to push and include a positive message in there. What if they're able to save 100 kids or 200 kids? What if they're able to save 1,000 kids who normally would have gone into that gang lifestyle or were already in it and they got pulled out of it? That's a positive thing. I mean, that it's all family life. And it's all how they're being raised and the role models that they have. And unfortunately, they don't have a whole lot of positive role models in these areas. So while I don't have a whole lot of confidence in this plan, because I know the guys kind of got to screw loose, the mayor over there, I, I, I got to give him credit, guys. I mean, I know we always want to bash these wackos like that because 99.99% .99 of their ideas are stupid. But um, if the right tools can be put in place... This could get some traction. I, I do feel like, again, i got to repeat this, that some adults, maybe young adults, but some adults have to get more involved and show these 100 young people that are going to be walking the streets and going around trying to spread this positive message about parenting and about, you know, hey, there's other options of things to do out there. Um, I, I do think that has to happen, that somebody helps them. Somebody gives them some support. I guess that's what I'm looking for. Uh, they need support more than anything. Because... Look, I know of a story. I gave a guy a ride to McDonald's. Oof. This has been 20-something years ago. And I remember I used to see this guy. I was going to work in the morning. And I would see this guy walking to school, actually to work, every morning. I didn't know he was in school also. A young black man. And he, excuse me, it was a Wendy's, not a McDonald's. So I always saw him walking to Wendy's. I worked downtown for a utility company. And I would always pass him. He was going the same direction I was as I was driving into work. And he would wear his McDonald's uh, shirt. So I knew where he was going to work. There was, a, uh, excuse me, I keep saying McDonald's. There was a Wendy's right down from where I worked. I started notice the, noticing the kid wearing a white or a black t-shirt. And he had his uniform shirt balled up in his hand. I knew it was his uniform shirt. I could see the, the red and the yellow and the different colors that I always saw him in. 
So I kept seeing that, and I knew where it was going. One morning, it was raining really bad. This kid had a garbage bag on. A garbage bag. Not a rain suit, not a slicker, a garbage bag on. So he's sitting here, and it's pretty rough. In fact, it's pretty rough outside right now. It's this type of weather that, you know, pouring down rain and rain coming from sideways, whipping around. So I pulled over to a service station, and he came walking by. I rolled my window down, and I yelled at him because he wasn't walking to my vehicle, obviously. I said, hey, bud. I said, uh, you need a ride. I know where you're going. You're going to Wendy's right there, right? And he kind of smiled and goes, yeah, how'd you know that? I said, dude, I pass you every single morning. I said, you and I go to work at the same time every single day. He couldn't get in my vehicle fast enough. And, you know, a very respectful kid. Took his garbage bag off and he said, do you mind if I put it in here? I said, dude, put it on the floor. You're good. I said, you might need it this afternoon because it's going to be pretty rough this afternoon. So he puts it in there. And we're driving, and we're just real small talk. You know, hey, man, where are you coming from? Where you live? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, man, I know that area, that kind of thing, uh, chit-chatting. And I, I leaned over, and I asked him, I said, hey, bud, I said, uh, I noticed your uniform. You started carrying your uniform. And I'm not thinking the obvious, right? I'm not thinking the guy's getting picked on or, you know, somebody's messing with him. I'm thinking it was hot. It was summertime. I'm thinking he got sweaty, and he didn't want to, you know, wear a sweaty vehicle. Uh, excuse me, vehicle. Where am I saying? <clears throat> a shirt. So I said, uh, I noticed you carrying a uniform shirt. I said, too hot to wear that sucker walking. And he kind of looked at me and paused for a minute. And he, then he realized what I thought. He goes, that's not why I stopped wearing it. And man, it did just hit me. It hit me. I, immediately when he said that, I was like, I just kind of looked at him. I said, uh, people giving you some crap about it? He goes, yes, sir. And I said, man, I said, that's so messed up. He goes, and I could tell he had a mentor in his life. That was a positive figure. Don't know if it was his dad, his mother, an uncle. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a scout leader for all I know. I don't know. But somebody had put some words of wisdom in this kid's mind. And I never will forget him saying that. He told me how much school he had left. I don't remember how much it was. And he was working his way. His, his stuff was paid for through some grants and stuff like that. So he was working his way to try to get a vehicle. And I never will forget his words of wisdom were along the lines, and I'm going to get this wrong because I don't know it word for word, but the people who were giving him, and his exact words were people who were giving him shh for walking to school with his Wendy shirt on were the same people who would give him the same shh in about 10 or 15 years when he has, has a nice paying job and a nice car and drives back home to the same hood to visit his mom for a holiday or something like that. This kid was already either wise enough to know, see ahead of himself, and know where he was going in his life, or somebody had taught him. Either way, it was here, and he knew, all I got to do is get over this hump, and I'm out. And, and that has always stuck with me. And you know that is that same mentality. A lot of you on a video that I put out last week use the analogy of crabs in a bucket. One tries to climb out and get out of it, and the other ones, out of envy and jealousy, grab them and pull them back down. It's a damn shame, man. That's the kind of world we live in. Let me explain something to you guys, and I know you guys feel the same way. No one who ever is trying to work as hard as me has ever given me crap. And I think everybody should remember that. You follow what I'm saying? The people who are trying to drag you down are always beneath you. Very rarely do the ones above you pull you down because guess what? They're above you or even even with you. It's always the ones beneath you who try to pull you down to their level because they're ashamed of where they are and they're envious of you and the hustle that you have to be a better person. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Please don't